Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto is one of the most popular and frequently performed pieces in the repertoire. The challenge for every pianist is to somehow forge a fresh interpretation. Top British pianist Stephen Huff received widespread acclaim for his recent Rachmaninoff recording, an interpretation in the spirit of the composer's own playing. Today he's rehearsing the work with conductor Richard Hickox and the National Orchestra of Wales. Well, the Rachmaninoff Second is perhaps the most popular piano concerto in the repertory because it's just a most beautiful piece of music. It's filled with gorgeous tunes and everyone loves a great melody. I think the piece is fascinating for all sorts of reasons, partly because of its popularity, something that a hundred years after it was written is still the most popular concerto in the repertoire. It has to ha be doing something right. It's a very well-constructed piece. It's, there really, I don't think, are any bars in it that you feel could be cut. And it's very exciting. It's a wonderful piece to sit in an audience and listen to. We know that Rachmaninoff was a very nervous performer. In fact, we're told that sometimes he had to be pushed onto the platform. He was terrified of playing in public. I have a, a lovely little sort of personal feeling about the piece in that it's perfect for the nervous pianist because it begins with some chords to warm up, to get to feel the instrument. You're sitting down at the piano and you're thinking, what's this like? And you... You're playing these chords just to feel the instrument. Then you reach the big one. moment you can't really hear the piano for another two minutes he's playing lots of notes warming his fingers up but he's given this luscious theme to the orchestra and they're covering him perhaps deliberately because you always are nervous am I warmed up enough so here you try the piano out you play for two minutes without anyone in the audience hearing whether you're playing any wrong notes and then you have a glorious melody to prove what a marvellous lyrical gift you have. Whenever I learn a new piece, or a piece for the first time, or come back to a piece, I've really got to want to play it, and I think that is already the first stage. If you actually want to play a piece because you love it, and because you feel you have something to say about it, it's a good start. It's not the sort of inspiration where you're sitting in a field looking at the sky and thinking beautiful artistic thoughts. It's graft. It's sitting on a piano stool with a piano, with a piano there, and a pencil, and a score, and and, and cutting through the thicket of this music and finding your way right to the heart of what the music is about. And this is hard work. To avoid listening to too many other recordings or performances is essential. To know the tradition, of course, and particularly the tradition, let's say, with Rachmaninoff of, of the composer's own style of playing and the, and the pianist that he liked. But once you have that language, if you like, you have to speak your own words with it. I hope that having something original to say makes it worth going to the other side of the world and stepping out onto the stage and, and, and wanting to share what I, I feel about a piece with, um, with the audience who's sitting there. I think this burning quality, this compulsion to play, it should be there in every human being, really. In order to live a full life, you have to burn about something.
let's not pretend that this is a nicely air-conditioned room. This is a furnace at times, and so it should be, because you're dealing with things which are at the absolute heart of what it means to live a meaningful life.